Hi friends, welcome. This is Patty Bennett. I am excited that you have decided to join me today. I have a fun technique video for you today. If you have joined me in the past, you know that we are doing a series of technique uh, techniques, <laughs> stamping techniques. And I today I am sharing with you a watercolor wash background technique and it's super super easy. I'm going to explain all the details, show you lots of samples. We're going to make a couple of backgrounds together. I'll tell you where you can get the technique sheet the whole bit. <laughs> but right now I am just going to welcome those who are joining live. Today is Friday, March 10th, and it is 11 a.m. Pacific time. So if you're joining in at that time, then you have found me live. You should also, I think, hopefully see a little red live button up there if you're joining live. And if you are, please say hi so that I know you are here. And then if you're watching a replay, just feel free to skip ahead a minute or two so that you don't need to listen to all the hellos. But I just like to welcome my viewers. Thank you for joining me each week. Hi, Stacy, Linda, Jeanne, Lori. Lisa, Randy, Jennifer, Mary, Lynn. Oh, so many. Hello, everybody. Hi, Kathy. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Shan. Oh, rainy in Utah. Yeah, Shan, you are probably getting the rain that we had um, yesterday and the day before, I would imagine. It's probably reaching you soon. Man, did we have some storms. Oh, my goodness. It was so windy last night. I was scared. I was praying so hard. <laughs> Hey, Debbie, Amanda, Lindsay, Denise, Patricia, Marcy. Hello, everyone. Welcome. So glad you are here. We are going to, I just realized my grid paper is upside down because the Stampin' Up! logo is upside down. Oh, well, please ignore. Here, let's do this. There. No problem. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, Shan said there's no sound. Can someone confirm? Are we okay with sound? I hope we're okay with sound. If not, maybe I need to uh, stop and come back. Okay, Jennifer says she can hear just fine. Beth's, Beth Ann says it's okay. Marcy says it's okay. Okay, well, thank you. All right, sorry, Shan. Not sure what the issue is. Um, could somebody just type real quickly to Shan that maybe she needs to exit and come back in? For me, that usually like fixes all the problems with a live. <laughs> um, oh, thank you, everybody. Okay, so everybody else is saying sound is good. Okie dokie. Thank you. Well, let's get started. I'm so, so, so excited about this for lots of reasons. Uh, number one. Excited to be back onto our technique class series. Yes, this is number five. And if you are looking for all of these resources, I invite you to come back to my blog, pattystamps.com, tomorrow. So pattystamps.com on, so that would be uh, March 11th. And you will have access to download this as well as a link to all the previous classes. These are just a series of free classes that I've been offering for different stamping techniques. I will also have, oh, some, I think a bird just hit the window. Oh, I hate that. Oh, dear. Uh, sorry, sidetrack. <laughs> I will also have, I'm going to show you these later, but I just want to give you a sneak peek here. I will also have the sea turtle cards and this beautiful palm tree card with the blue and green backgrounds on my blog tomorrow. And then we're going to look at some other cards I've made with the orange, red, and yellow. Those will be on a future date on my blog. I'm kind of spreading it out because it gets like way too full of a black a blog post. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is fun. Oh, I'm glad that you're going to enjoy this. Thank you. Hi, Cindy. Welcome. She says it's her first time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad you're here. All right. So official 
um, introduction. My name is Patty Bennett. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I've been one for almost 28 years, and I blog each day at pattystamps.com. I think it's been about 16 years, and what what did I post the other day? 5,700 blog posts? <laughs> that's a lot of blog posts. <laughs> so that's where you will find me. And the replay will be on my YouTube channel later today. You can always watch the replay here if you missed a part and you want to see more. So we're going to talk about watercolor wash backgrounds, a super easy way to do them. And I have a little secret weapon over here. This is my salt dispenser. We're going to be using salt. And if you haven't done this before, I think you're going to like it. It's really cool. So what you need is watercolor paper. It's probably readily available in lots of places. I use the Fluid 100 watercolor paper that Stampin' Up! offers in their catalog because I purchase all my supplies that I can through Stampin' Up! So the sheet, I didn't actually measure this. Please hold. The sheets are actually five by seven. And I just simply cut them in half for these projects because I wanted to experiment with lots of colors and see how they turned out. And I just thought, oh, this is a good size. As you can see, it layers really nicely onto a card front with a mat around it. So we are going to go ahead and do the watercolor wash backgrounds first. Then I'm going to show you how I did the turtles. You'll also need whatever ink pads you want. Now for these blue greens, I used this combo and it will be on my blog tomorrow. Bermuda Bay Tahitian Tide Granny Apple Green. You can pick whatever you would like. But th that were, was the three in the blue green range that I used for these. And then if you wanted to replicate these, I used mostly Calypso Coral, Mango Melody, and Cajun Craze. On this one, I also tossed in just a little bit, uh, what did I use? Uh, the Pale Papaya, that's right. I was trying to remember, Pale Papaya, a little bit. But um, the rest of them were those three. And you'll find the color combinations when I blog each card. So we'll keep those out. We're going to do a blue-green background. And I'm going to show you kind of the magic of what the salt does. So this one, I used the salt. And I'll show you how I used it, but I just want to show you the difference first. This one has no salt. Do you see those cool little speckles? This is a technique I learned from my dad. My dad was a watercolor artist, and he often used salt on his watercolor washes in the background of his paintings. And I've watched him do that many times, and I love the result. Do you love that kind of a fun speckle look? And the minute I saw that, I said to myself, sea turtles, ocean, waves, the, you know, how the waves kind of get the frothiness and the the sea spray and whatnot. And I was like, oh my gosh, 100%, I'm going to do the turtles. So I'll show you how to achieve that. In addition to the watercolor paper and the ink pads, I also pulled out, sorry about that big glare, there's a ring light right above me. <laughs> this is the plate for my Stamparatus. And this is what I chose to use when setting down my watercolor paper and using the water and, you know, using the wet method with, well, it's wet. I mean, it's watercolor, right? Wet. Because you want to protect your surface. You don't just want to do it on paper or on your desk. Now, if you don't have that or, you know, you don't want to use that, you can use uh, any kind of like a plastic window sheet. If you have a cello bag, if you have a glass mat, or if you just have a non-porous surface, even like a lid from a big Tupperware or something, you could use that. You can use anything where the water is not going to damage your surface. But this is what I elected to do. Now, I didn't think about the glare. 
So let's set this down and see if this is going to be too distracting. Is that going to be all right? I'm sorry about that ring light. Is that going to be a problem? Let's see. If I do that, maybe. I'm sorry about the glare. It's just, you know, the beauty of having to have 500 lights above you to get the your um space lit enough for a video. <laughs> Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. You guys says it's fine. You guys say it's fine. Thank you. Okay, we'll go with it. All righty. So I, anyway, like I said, this is my Stamparatus plate. Use what you have or try the Stamparatus plate. I thought it worked really well. It's a half sheet of the watercolor paper. And what I did was I opened up my ink pads, smushed, you know, that's a very technical term, right? smushed some ink. I think I'll do this one in the middle. Smush down some ink. And it's okay. You can see that probably a little bit of the green touched onto this pad. It's okay. It's really not going to hurt it. And if you are really worried about it, you can dab it off with a paper towel on your ink pad, and then you can do your re-inker on top of it. But really, I am not worried about just a tiny bit of color transfer. It's going to be fine. All right, so I've got color on my plate, and then you can use any kind of a water spritzer. I just happen to love, this is, this is not this product. Like, this product is gone. It's just a, was a some kind of a spray for your hair that my hairdresser recommends. But I love the spray of this bottle. So when this product was done, I filled it with water. Now, I know you're saying, but you should be using the Stampin' Up! spritzers because you're a demonstrator. Okay, well, if you're just doing one, great, use this. But I made dozens of these, and I would have to keep running to the sink to get more water and... I don't know, call me lazy, but it seemed much better to just have a big bottle of water. So that's that's my spritzer for this. So you can see I got that fairly generously wet. And now I'm just going to lay my watercolor paper down. And you can kind of give it like little taps here and there if you want. And look at that. Every single one of these is going to be completely different. And look how beautiful. Now I'm going to put this back down get this area just a tiny bit. There we go. Just fill that in just a tiny bit more. And then while this is wet, immediately, and yes, that's an electric grinder. I have one for pepper and one for salt in the kitchen. But I don't really cook much, so it's great for this technique. <laughs> so you put the salt on immediately when it's wet, and then you let it dry. And when you let it dry and you brush off the salt, it's going to leave that beautiful, speckly background. Isn't this so simple? So easy, so fun. I'm pretty sure if my dad saw me doing this, he'd be like, what the heck? That's not how you do a watercolor wash background. Okay, so let me just say this. There are so many ways to do a watercolor wash background. This, I think, is the easiest and most full foolproof. So this is how I do it. <laughs> and I even watched some of my older videos that I've done with all different techniques of watercolor washes. I've watched those over the past couple days just to remind myself of how I did, oh, look how gorgeous, oh my gosh, to remind myself of how I did some different techniques. And I never actually shared this exact technique before, but I did share, let's see if I have one of these handy. Where is that? Please hold, I see it. Okay, in the past, I had inked one of the big blocks, like this size or the really big one, with this same kind of idea, smushing the ink pad, spritzing it, and putting the paper on it. So you could also use a really large clear block. Now look, I think we can get one more out of here before we clean this up. What do you think? Let's do one more. Then I'm going to look at, at um, comments. So just hang on one sec while I kind of reactivate some of that. Let's see what we can do here. 
One thing I really like on these backgrounds is where some of this remains uncolored. I actually really enjoy some of that white space. And I know that's unusual for me because usually I like to kind of fill up as much as I can. But I really do like the white space on these. Okay, what do you think? Are these just, I, I just think they're amazing. And they're so simple. There's no right or wrong. And they're easy, right? Oh, okay, great question. So Tian says, can you use any type of salt? So let me just address that real quick. These are the real big salt gr grains. No, what are they called? Salt, salt pieces. Like, are they grains? What are they called? Anyway, um, I mean, I know the pepper is a peppercorn, but I don't know what that's called. Rock salt, I guess, is what you call it. You do want to use fairy, fairly large rocks of salt, and this is grinding them fairly coarse. Let me, let me just put some in my hand and show you. So do you see? Those are fairly coarse. This is not like table salt that you would get in a restaurant or in a little salt packet. That really doesn't do the all the cute little speckly things. It it just sort of dissolves. So you want sort of a rock salt. Granule, okay, we'll we'll go with that. I think we can go with that. Yep, no rules, Marcy. You are right. Uh, okay, so she's making a really good point here. And Glenda, I'll get to your question. Marcy said, just have fun. And I want to tell you, that is why I'm doing this video today. That's why I'm doing this technique is because this to me is like ultimate fun. I love this. And I'm so passionate about making these beautiful backgrounds for my cards that I just wanted to share with you. So yes, that's my ultimate goal is have fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, Glenda said, could you use the, the plate for your big shot machine? Yes, you absolutely could use your clear plate. That would be a great idea. Let's see. Yes, white space, definitely. Oh, good. You are loving this. Thank you, everyone. So, Gwendolyn, I was showing, maybe you missed the beginning. I was showing in the beginning that by putting the salt on and then wiping it off when this is dry, you get all these little speckles. If you don't, you get this. Nothing wrong with this at all. This is beautiful. But I was showing the difference. And I absolutely love how this looks. And I was using it with the sea turtles because it really reminded me of kind of the ocean and the movement and the waves and the foam and whatnot. So you can leave it off or you can add it. It's totally fine either way. Crystals. Okay. I, I'll, I'll do that. Granules. Got it. Yes, sea salt would be great. Kosher salt would be great. Yes, anything like that. Just not, you know, those little teeny tiny packets of salt that you get in a restaurant and you rip it open. Like not that kind of salt, but the granule kind is perfect for this. So what I'm going to do is just wipe this off. I probably could have done one more without even putting any more ink on there. But you get the idea, right? And that was just a baby wipe. You can use whatever you'd like. So you'll set these aside until they're dry. You can always use your um, your heat tool, you know, to speed up drying if you're really impatient about getting onto your project. But look, can you already see how much impact the salt had on these? Isn't that just gorgeous? I mean, it's amazing. I just think it's so much fun. So much fun. And I'm going to show you then. I don't think we need to do one of these because you get the idea, right? But I just want to show you some of the samples with the Calypso Coral, Mango Melody, and Cajun Craze. And again, you can see all those little speckly, funny right? These areas where the salt was. I think I have one in here without salt. Let me, let me check. Oh, I didn't. I salted all of these. That sounds funny. I salted all of these. <laughs> I 
crack myself up. <laughs> but aren't they gorgeous? And I'll show you some cards that I made with this color combo. This is, you know, what I call patty colors. They're nice, bright. Love the reds, oranges, yellows. Um, I also love the blues and greens, but they're, they're, um, they're fun. Any color combo will be so much fun. So much fun. Yep, oranges would be great for fall. And uh, Sherry, that reminds me, you know what's really cool also, and I'll show you on one of the samples. You can die cut these. It doesn't have to be a background of a card. Like I could really see putting a bunch of fall leaves on this piece and die cut them, and you would have one of a kind, gorgeous leaves. Or I mean, whatever, right? This could be a flower, a sunflower, a tulip, whatever. It could be anything. But wouldn't that be fun just to use these for some die cutting as well? Uh, let's see. Anne is hopping on a bit late. She'll catch the replay. Awesome. I'm glad you will. Yes, a sunset. Exactly. Joyce says you crack me up too. <laughs> yes, I'm going to go over the sea turtle cards. We haven't done those yet. I just gave a sneak peek at the beginning. I will I will show those. Yes, the frost. Uh-huh. It does look like frost, doesn't it? No problem, Joanne. You can watch the replay as well. Hi, Patricia. Good to see you. Let's see. Um, Jennifer says she did this with her students. It's awesome. Thanks, Gay. Right, Joyce, the little um the little bits of salt will just melt down. The bigger crystals, they do stay on here. Like, like, listen here. See, they're all still there, but once this starts to dry, you can just rub them off. So I just have a little garbage can next to me, and I just wipe them all off. They've done their work. Once they've absorbed the color, they've done their work. All right, let's see. Any other questions so far? It's watercolor paper, Donna. It's actually the Stampin' Up! Fluid 100 watercolor paper. You can use any watercolor paper for this. All right, let's, yeah, the barrier reef, it does look like an aerial shot of the barrier reef. That's a great analogy, Christine. I love that. I love that. Yeah, the sunflower, Tammy, exactly. <laughs> okay, so let's go to the cards. I wanted to show you what I had done with some of these backgrounds. And I want to show you how I stamp the turtles because do you see how this turtle actually looks like it's rounded? And I wanted to show you what I did to achieve that. So I'll show you that in a minute. But in the background of this, I took this stamp. Let's back up half of a second here because if you don't, aren't familiar, this is the sea turtle set. So I've used the large and small turtles, and then I've used this piece, which is right here, and I used it to kind of enhance the look of, we'll call it the barrier reef, right? Or the, the froth and the all of the pieces of foam and spray and whatnot. It, this set, by the way, is on page 29 in the current January to April catalog. This is what it looks like. It does not have dies, but it's super easy to fussy cut. This is not a really time consuming set to cut, but it is a reversible stamp. And I want to show you how to use that. So we will do that. Stay tuned. Okay. Oh, and someone remind me if you want to see, I have my calendar over here of my dad's watercolor paintings. I want to show you that if you guys want to see that towards the end. Yep, it looks like the earth. Tammy, new obsession. Yes, we must do it, right? Marcy says she's ready for a tropical vacation, totally. <laughs> so back to this. I started to talk about this. And I got totally sidetracked. Can you see right here in this corner, I've actually stamped this stamp. Try not to get all the glare, sorry. I've stamped it right on top of that watercolor background. And I think I used... Oh gosh, now I don't know. I think I used Garden Green. And I stamped it off and I just kind of lightly gave it a little extra texture with this bubbly looking stamp. And you don't have to, but I just wanted to see what it looked like. And so I gave that a try. 
And then it's layered onto a piece of the by the bay paper. And this one is the one that looks like kind of driftwood or maybe a wooden floor or fence. I just thought that was a nice compliment. And then to pick up this bright Pacific Point blue, I put it on a Pacific Point card base. So that was that one. And then on this one, I made it a top fold, a vertical, again, stamping that bubbly stamp in the background. Now, this was one without the salt. So can you see how just really smooth back there? It doesn't have the texture, for instance, that this does. Do you see that difference? And I think that's why I decided to try that bubbly stamp, just to give it a little added interest. I'm pretty sure if I remember right what I did. <laughs> my thought process. And then I just decal cut with the decal rectangle, that same piece of watercolor paper, put it onto a piece of the by the bay paper with the shells so that it's just kind of that neonautical beach theme and wishing you a warm and beachy kind of day. And that is from the palm tree set, I think, pretty sure. So speaking of that, here is one that I did with the palm tree dies, and this one does not have salt either. So you can see how smooth it looks in that background. Just very, very smooth looking. And the pieces of, well, I guess they're grass, those were die cut from a piece like this where it had the salt speckles and I did that so that you'd have a little bit of added interest and then I just decided to do those in black just for a real soft um well not really soft but just like dramatic but subtle if that even makes any sense <laughs> And I did use my black Stampin' Dimensionals behind those. Finally had a really, really wonderful use for the black Stampin' Dimensionals. And I die cut the sun that is in the same dies. One last one. I had a strip of the watercolor paper after I die cut these two pieces of grass. So I laid it on top of the by the bay paper. I think this one is everyone's favorite with the gold fish kind of swimming in a school in a circle, a school of fish swimming in a circle. I'll, I'll get it right. Sometimes words are hard. <laughs> and again, this look where the turtle really looks rounded. So I want to show you that of how I accomplished that. So let's set these aside. Now these are a t probably a tiny bit wet still. So I'm going to move those aside. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you like these. Oh, Marcy says, I know what I'm going to play with in my craft room today. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you, everybody. Lori, Carolyn, thank you. Let me just scoop off this extra salt. Don't need that. Because that will make a lump. In fact, just to be sure, I'm just going to cover my surface with my little, this is the grid pad you can purchase to use with the Stamparatus, but I love this thing just for putting on my desk or when I travel and I want to stamp. It's just the most awesome little size, and it does have the centimeters on the back, so if you use centimeters instead of inches, it's multi-purposeful. Is that a word? Uh, it is now. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was reaching for a piece of white cardstock and I just whacked the camera. I am so sorry, everybody. Oh, now it's going to freak out. Okay. I'm just trying to get it to focus and stay still. I'm so sorry. Okay. Are we going to stay focused? Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Okay. Hang on. Deep breath. <laughs> Joanne says it's a showstopper. You are so sweet. Oh, I'm so glad you like the turtles, Lori. My grandma loved turtles. She lived in, well, when they retired, they lived in the desert in Southern California. So she had desert turtles. Now I know that's not the same thing as a sea turtle, but anytime I see turtles, I just, I just think of her and I love, love that. So yeah. 
So I used I used the sea turtles. Now hang on, I need to find my sponge dauber. There it is. I thought I kept it out, but I had put it away. So we need that. And I am going to use that with Evening Evergreen. Just going to get my colors set up here. And let's see. I, I'll be honest. I don't even remember for sure exactly every color that I used on these, I think. Which is a good thing because it means there's no right or wrong. You can do whatever you want. So I'm going to grab Pool Party. I'm going to grab Bermuda Bay. I'm going to show you how you can stamp this. So I'm going to do Bermuda Bay first. And forgive me if it doesn't turn out exactly like this one because I honestly can't remember 100% what colors I used, but you can play. You can use whatever you want. Okay, so Bermuda Bay for this, um, the detailed part. Now, here's the magic of how to make it appear more rounded. I've got uh, Evening Evergreen, so just a darker shade, my sponge dauber, and I'm going to add color. around the outside and kind of the bottom part of his fins, arms. I think they're arms, fins, I don't know. Whatever they're called, right? And then, since you can see right through it, I hope I got that. It's really difficult to look through the phone and see what you're doing. So fingers crossed that this turns out. <laughs> it's a tiny bit off. It's a tiny bit blurry, but, but it's okay. So now the outsides are darker. So now I'm going to clean that off. And then, you know, I said these are reversible. So then you pull this off and you flip it. And this side is smooth. Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry off all that glare. This side is smooth. So now I'm going to ink this side in my lighter color, which is Pool Party. And look straight down. And it fills that in. So I think... That's great. I love it. It's beautiful. I think for this one, I might have stamped off the pool party or I might, gosh, I might have even used Coastal Cabana. I don't know for sure. I've done so many. They're all different and you can make them. How, they don't even have to be blue. I mean, I don't even think the turtles really are blue. I just thought they looked really pretty to pair them with these backgrounds to make them blue. So you can do whatever you'd like. And then the little turtle, same way where you stamp the smooth side in the lighter color, you flip it over and you stamp the detailed side in a darker color. So I think, think this one was Coastal Cabana and Pacific Point, I think. I should have written them down. But you get the idea, and that's what helps give them that roundedness, is to use that sponge dauber around the outside edge. I suppose you could also do it on the smooth side. I don't think you have to do it on the detailed side. I mean, I, it probably doesn't matter. But just giving it that darker shading and lighter down the center, I think is a really cool technique. So there we go. Those were the, the turtle cards with the blue and green backgrounds. Now let me just catch up on comments and then I'm going to show you the orange and yellow cards. And I want to show you the calendar of my dad's uh, watercolor paintings. 
Oh, thanks, Tammy. Therese says we have a South American red foot tortoise. He's a hoot. A hoot. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. Thank you, Gwendolyn. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, everybody. No problem, Nell. I hope you can watch the replay. Oh, good. Anne likes the shading tips. Thank you. Yes. So the reversible stamps, Sherry, are... Uh, I don't know, maybe this is the second or third year we've had them. Wait, longer than that, because I remember right before the lockdown, I remember using that mountain set. Let me see if it's behind me. Hang on one second. Uh, yeah, this one. So Mountain Air is another one of these reversible sets where you would stamp the detail, you flip the piece of photopolymer upside down, and then you use the back side to kind of do the fill in. So same idea. And we've had a few different sets through the years that are like that. But um, the turtle, I think, is is just perfect. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, Linda. Thanks, Mary. Um, the turtles are in the January to April catalog, page 29. Thank you, Patricia. Let's see. Couldn't you do that with a lot of stamps? Shan, well, it depends. They So, for instance, like let's just look at flame, <laughs> flamed florets. Yeah, sure. Framed florets. Okay, so this, if you flip it upside down, it won't fill it in because it's not symmetrical. So you would have to make sure, like this might possibly almost be symmetrical enough that you could try it with something like that. But basically it has to be a symmetrical stamp so that when you flip it upside down, it fills it in perfectly. But you know, you can... um any photopolymer set, you can totally try it. Oh, thank you, Mary. She said, my cards are gorgeous, but she wasn't a fan of this set. Um, but seeing it in action, maybe she was wrong. I'm glad you like it. Oh, Karen. Okay, so she said she didn't know we had reversible stamps. Yep. <laughs> Jennifer <laughs> says, you can tell you're in your element. Watercoloring is your gift. So let me just tell you something, Jennifer. That's so sweet of you to say. So my dad was an architect. I thought I was going to be an architect. I went to school for architecture, ended up deviating into structural engineering instead. But all that time, he was also a watercolor artist. And in his retirement years, he would judge watercolor shows. He would participate in water watercolor shows. He sold his watercolor paintings. And I could never draw anything freehand, ever, never, ever. I can't, like, I can draw circles and squares, that, and then I'm done. But things like this, you can tell by my voice, I'm sure, just make my heart sing. And I love having learned this type of a thing from him, using the colors, how they blend, techniques like the salt, things like that. So um, I'm just blessed that I was able to learn that from him before he passed. It's been, can you believe it's been two years already? I can't. It, it seems like months, but anyway. Um, so yes. Yeah. So thank you for your kind comment. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> So let's look at the cards that I did with the orange and yellow backgrounds. I thought immediately of the sunflower. So the background has the orange and yellow, and then I had this rogue sunflower sitting on my desk. And so I used the die that goes with it, cut it out, used that new leaf punch. Love this punch. It's this one. It's part of the online exclusive. Love this punch. And the green in color glimmer paper. And just made a super quick card with just kind of pieces that were on my desk. So background for that. Same leaves. And I had this butterfly, uh, butterfly, ladybug sitting on my desk. And I thought, okay, you need a home. So same kind of idea. Just layered it onto the background piece with the the really fun patty colors. <laughs> okay. 
This one did not have so much red, and I thought I would do a lemon card, but then the lemons on top of the yellow, they just got totally lost. So it's a grapefruit card with one slice of lemon. I don't know. Whatever. You can do whatever you want when you're the artist, right? <laughs> but just just that background, isn't that just fun for just something completely different? I just love it. I think it's so pretty. And then I decided to use some of the new Hello Irresistible and Irresistible Blooms, the paper and the stamps and the dies, and just do a card that pulled those colors together. So those were my cards with the yellow and orange and red. And then I did have a green and blue piece that I used with some of my limes and made that. So here, here, here you have your, your pairing of citrus <laughs> with those backgrounds. So those, I think that was everything I came up with for completed cards with this watercolor, easy watercolor background technique. And I hope you like these. I think they're really, really fun. Thank you. Oh, you do like them. Thank you, everybody. So don't go yet because I have something I want to show you. But I'm so glad that you like them. I just want to um, check any comments here. Thank you, everybody. I'm so glad you like this. I hope you'll try it. Don't you agree that this is easy? Really easy? Give me a heart or a thumbs up if you think this is super simple. This is not hard at all. And the great news is there's no right or wrong. And I only threw away one. Well, I didn't throw it away. It's on my desk. I was actually maybe going to show it to you. But there's only one that didn't turn out, but it was my fault. And if you want to see it, I can show you what I did. I probably should show you because then you won't make that mistake. Yes, yeah, so simple. Thank you, everybody. I'm so glad you like him. Thank you. Thank you. So let me show you. This is a calendar that I had made with my dad's paintings. This is, of course, this month. So that's Half Dome in Yosemite. This is one of my favorites. I think this was just in his head. I don't think this is a particular place, but that was one of my favorites. That one is hanging um, actually just right up here above me in my stamp loft. This one was a snow scene that he did. So then let's go forward here. Mount Fuji. My parents spent a couple of years in Japan. My dad was with the Army Corps of Engineers. And so he um, does a lot of scenes from Japan. This is the casino in on Catalina Island down in Southern California. It's a very iconic structure. You may even recognize it. This is Aruba. This was on a cruise that we all did together. They came on one of the Stampin' Up! cruises with us. This is in Southern California in the San Gabriel Mountains. It's, I believe it's a monastery or was a monastery. And I'm not sure if it's currently used as that, but he painted this a lot. This was probably inspired by Yosemite. He was really awesome at perspective and buildings because he did all the renderings at the architectural firm. So he was very precise when it came to, came to buildings. This is a barn in Wisconsin that he did a painting of. I think this is just a made up scene. Fall colors. This, I think, was a very loose interpretation of something in Yosemite. And then he did lots and lots of paintings for Christmas. We have a couple of them, and I switched them out in the month of December in our home. And he he did several with the manger and the wise men or just different different scenes like that. But anyway, so I just wanted to show you that. Oh, let's get back to... So just so you kind of get a feel for the talent that he had, holy business, I come nowhere near that. <laughs> Marcy says she could live in the October painting. <laughs> 
Oh, I'm glad you like them. Uh, was there a question about... Therese says, do you put your Facebook videos on YouTube? Yes. So this afternoon, this video will be on my YouTube channel. It will also be on my blog, pattystamps.com, tomorrow, along with all of the blue-green cards. And then next week sometime, you will see the yellow-orange cards on my blog. And I am basically, if you look for Patty Stamps on any channel on YouTube or on the internet, you'll find me. Um, Instagram, everything is Patty Stamps. And yes, my dad was, was very talented, Therese. Thank you. He, he's He was amazing. Thank you, everybody. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed seeing those. So let me show you the oops because I wanted to try something. So this was the oops. I thought that as I had my plate and I had the, the colors smushed on there, I thought that I could grab a reinker and add some drops of water of ink and spritz that, but it's so concentrated that the watercolor paper just sucked that up and made spots. Now, if you wanted spots, that's how you're going to do it. Add some drops of reinker on your plate and soak those up. But this was not what I was after. So this one's going in the garbage. I don't like it. But I just thought maybe you could have a little learning moment from that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I feel like I was going to tell you something else, and now I can't think of what it was. Was there anything I said? For those of you who weren't tuned in the beginning, this is a reminder that this is part five of our free technique class series. So tomorrow, uh, March 11th, if you go to my blog, pattystamps.com, you can download this as well as I have a link to all the others that are all archived on my blog. So we've done, this is our fifth different technique we've done. And you can get that. You can also pin the cards to your Pinterest boards or, you know, wherever you like to save them. Oh, tell me that's a good idea. She said, die cut something out of the corner of this before I toss it. Yeah, I could totally get some good real estate there and there and, and maybe even something down here, down here. Yeah, you're right. I should do that. I could definitely do that. <laughs> Sherry says, you've told us so much. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, thank you, everyone. I'm so glad that you like these. Oh, Jennifer, good idea. Yeah, I could just hang on. Let's see. I don't want to bump the camera again because that was a disaster. I'm reaching. So I could even just grab. Look at that. I could probably do that, right? Just put a die on top of it and totally use it. Thank you all. You're all so amazing. I love that idea. <laughs> Draw faces on them. <laughs> I love that, Marcy. <laughs> oh, Sherry says she's ordering the turtle. That's awesome. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, oh, Susie's going to order the turtle also. <laughs> yeah, hopefully the turtle doesn't go on back order now. Now that everybody sees that it is a totally awesome stamp set. It is, right? It's so cool. So I hope that you all have a super awesome weekend and we'll uh, um, tune in. Oh, you know what? Next Friday will be St. Patrick's Day. What should we do? We should do something with green. I'll try to think of something with green to do next week. We should do green St. Patty's Day, right? That would be fun. I don't know what. We'll do something. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Oh, you're welcome, Carrie. Thanks, Anita. Thank you, Cindy. You're all turtle fans now. <laughs> oh, good. And Susan has it and she's going to try it. I'm glad. I hope that you'll all try this fun technique having and have a great weekend. I hope you find some crafty time to be um, had on the weekend. And I'll see you all next week on our weekly live. And yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you again. I just appreciate you spending your time with me on Fridays. It's always so much fun. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Anne. Thanks, Christine. You're all so kind. Thank you. Thank you. And 
Tammy, I get to see Tammy for lunch now. Isn't that fun? I love that we live so close that we can just grab lunch together. So I will be checking out that and I'll let you go. Thank you again. Bye, everybody.